Good evening and welcome. Happy Christmas! It's time for us to have a lovely time. We all like to learn about geography and history. For me, mathematics is a bit of a mystery. Joe says he finds PE quite scary. He has to wear little shorts, and though they're really muscly, his legs are horribly hairy. <laughs> It's Christmas! It's the Horn section podcast. Her legs, her legs, It's the Horn section podcast. Her legs, her legs, her legs, her legs. section podcast. Her legs, her legs, It's the Horn, the Horn section podcast. Hello, on BBC One. Finally. Yes, today's Finally. episode is on BBC One at six o'clock. Prime time. Instead of the one show. Oh, Hello, know. good evening, and welcome to the final episode of this series of the Horn section podcast. Is it the potato episode? Ooh. No, it's the not Ato episode, because it's the Christmas episode. Ding dong, merrily on high. Shut up. And what better way to mark the occasion than to play an immediate game of Wobbling Willip. Everyone ready? <laughs> yep. <laughs> In this game, we all have to say the word Willip at the same time while wobbling our cheeks like this. The last person <laughs> still wobbling Willip without taking a breath at the end is the winner. <laughs> is everyone ready to wobble Willip? Oh, yeah. Yep. yep. So, you're not allowed to take a breath during it. Last person wobbling, will it wins. Happy Christmas. Let's go. Mark Brown wins. Wow. Right, boys, how old are you and how are you feeling? Joe? 42, hungover. Well, make it rhyme. 42, feeling... <laughs> blue. Boozy blue. <laughs> do it Do it then. I'm 42 and I'm boozy blue. Willip? 41, fantastic son. <laughs> <laughs> Pianist? 42, I wish I knew what to do. <laughs> oh, I like this bit. Ben? Uh, 42, pretty good. <laughs> Brown? 44, really? well, I might have COVID. Oh, you might have COVID. Really? That oh. doesn't rhyme. Oh. Yeah. Hang on. Oh. Just wait for the results. Oh. Results are in? Uh, no, we don't have COVID. No. Oh. It's just normal. It's just normal cold. Honestly? I oh, know, I'm waiting for the results. Still. You look like you've got it if the symptoms are looking really grumpy and big cheeks. Right, well, <laughs> I, guess we... <laughs> I guess we should hear a silly old song then. Let's big start... cheeks. Let's start... Big cheeks. <laughs> now I've Let's heard st... it all. They are big. Let's start with a sexy song from the 42-year-old pianist. Hit it! It takes many personalities to make up our small band Such a mix of egos can get quite out of hand Most of the band are sensitive in things they say and do So if you guys are curious, I'll explain it just for you First you've got Mark, he's a humble guy If you meet him in the street, you'd say he's verging on shy But how about Ben? He's a modest chap If you tell him that he's great, then he gets in a flap And William hides his light under a bushel all alone And I avoid the limelight like it's the plague Alex, he turns it on for the show But he's crippled by self-doubt And now let's hear about Joe So what have we all learned today that we're not all the same? Five of us are pretty cool, but Joe simply has no shame. 
Because Joe just blows his own trumpet, blows his trumpet all day. Joe just blows his own trumpet, and that's all there is to say. Joe just blows his own trumpet, his boasting makes me feel sick. Joe just blows his own trumpet, he's such an arrogant prick. Do you remember the time he interrupted a wedding to say he was one million times better than the groom? What a toss pot! Or when he called Louis Armstrong, rank amateur at best. Who does he think he is? Yeah, do you remember that time he broke into the Millwall dressing room and proceeded to give the half-time team talk? And then he replaced the keeper with himself, claiming that he was the panther. And he always says he has to flush the box six times when he done pooper. Remember that time he sent Roger Federer a video on how to improve his backhand? Twat. Oh, <laughs> poor, poor old Joe. I enjoyed that. Right, well, look. Do we have a one-person special guest audience today? No. No, 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 no. We have two special guest audience Whoa. members. Wow. That's right. So let's meet the first one now. It's only the Emmy-winning composer, Rupert Gregson-Williams. <laughs> Rupert Gregson-Williams. Welcome to the Horn Section podcast, Rupert Gregson Williams. Thank you. Um, my first, my first questions are: How are you, and where are you, Rupert? I'm in the UK. Uh, I'm often as not, but um, but the last years seen me here, and I'm good. I'm very good, mm-hmm. thank you. Um, my next question: If someone asks you what you do, which people often do to me, what 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 do you say? What's your stock answer for what you do? Stock answer is: I'm a film composer. Uh, and if they look confused or if they're going to ask me lots of questions, I just say I'm a musician, but I'm a, I'm a film composer okay. first and foremost. Yeah. Can you, can you separate the two when you're watching a movie, the track from the movie? I try. If the score's really bad, I can't, but if it's really good, I, I, mm. I, you know, I'll, I'll, I just, I've learned that over the years that you've, that, um, uh, watching the movie for the first time, you know, trying to separate them is, is a, is a good is a good thing to do. Otherwise, you're just spoiling it. It's a little bit like, by, like being a musician or maybe a writer, uh, you know, of novels or whatever. If you, if you, if you, you can spoil it for yourself if you're just um, listening to the bass line and wondering how that is produced, and that just takes you out of the music, and then and then and so that track is ruined yeah. for you. You know, that's exactly the same with comedy. That I find it very hard to watch a stand-up comedian now because you can't take away the sort of work from it you can't you can always spot the writing um well the main reason Rupert I suppose I asked you particularly to come on the podcast is that we met quite a few times in the late 1980s weirdly um <laughs> when I was 10 11 and 12 I don't know how old you were but you were my music teacher that's right yeah and that that's how I think of you still my memory is a, a sort of brown corduroy <laughs> jacket is yeah. that possible no I've got a big memory of that jacket yeah that was my that was my rebel me saying I'm a music teacher, I'm not going to conform. Were you composing at the same time when you went home at night? Uh, I was trying, yeah, but I think you can't do that stuff and and you know do a full time job. So I guess I made a choice to, to to move and take a risk of not being able to pay the rent. And um, yeah, yeah, and was lucky. But um, yeah, no, I wasn't. I was trying my hardest, but um, not not getting very far. Yeah, well, most of my band teach as well. I think, especially nowadays, most musicians have to. Yeah, sure. To uh, make ends meet. Um, I think they have a mixed relationship with teaching. I think they like the kids, but they have a lot of kids who don't necessarily like music and are being forced down a, a track. <laughs> I, I, th- I, I, read a st- I think I heard a story from your brother um, about the piano you played at your home. Is, it, is he telling the truth that your dad bought the piano with the winnings from a 100 to 1 bet? On yeah. a horse in the Grand National, is that correct? That's right. Yeah, uh, he won the first so, time. This famous horse called Red Rum, who won it three times in the end. I think oh, was it Red Rum? It was Red Rum. Mm. It was the first time that Red Rum won, and he. And if he hadn't, if Red Rum hadn't come in, do you think your life would be any different, or would it just <laughs> be the same but with a different piano? Yeah, it would have been the same with a different piano. There were a couple of other pianos; they were just dodgier. Oh well, better story if <laughs> if it was all on that horse. <laughs> Guys, that was Rupert Gregson Williams. He's a proper man, isn't he? Just a dude. yeah, Finally, a musician, some heavyweight. What did he win his Emmy for? Uh, Hotel Rwanda, the soundtrack to that. Oh, cool. 
Thought he did Hacksaw easy. Ridge and Postman Pat the movie, but we'll find out all about them later in the podcast. <laughs> oh, cool. Meanwhile, he was interesting, but this guy's even more interesting. Let me introduce you to Willip. Willip, this is the band. Band, this is Willip. Hello, Willip. Willip. Hi, Willip. Hello. And Willip has been busy in his little hole designing a game for us for Christmas, haven't you, Willip? Yeah. So You seem convinced. Yeah, yeah. I thought this would be about a few episodes' time, so it's not been written yet, but I'm happy to wing it. <laughs> yes, please. Yes, please. <laughs> Um, In a few episodes time. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes around March, you were, yeah, exactly. you were aiming for. Yeah. Uh, 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 let's start off like this. I like, I like let's that. start, start I'll, off I'll like start, this. I'll start off with a little song, see if I can remember it. Okay. Uh, it's an old one. Is that all right? Mm, Tough. Yeah. Cheryl Cole and Nat King Cole got together and decided any time, any place, any weather, if you haven't got mayonnaise, you have to get it and mix it with the cabbage that you've already shredded. That's Cole's Law. Whoa! Hey, that was hey. Funny, wasn't it? Yeah, lovely. Great game. Why, well, why? Why was that funny? That was funny because it was a pun. Now, here's another. <laughs> here's another pun. We all love puns. Here's another pun. Why? We've just Alexis had an Robert... Emmy-winning composer on. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Well, why did the... Here's another pun, and this yes. is a very poor one. All right. And this, but this is what the the sort of the game's based around. What did the lexicographer buy from the bakery? Oh, um, how long have we got? Uh, Till Christmas. An eclair? Why would he have bought, he or she bought an eclair? Or or they. Or they. <laughs> the answer is synonym bun. Synonym <laughs> bun. Oh, oh, I like it. I like yeah, it. That's very good. Yeah, Earlier well on, we, 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 did, we discovered that puns are really funny. But <laughs> are synonyms funny? <laughs> so that's what we're going to do This, this is, is like the inception of games. Yeah. I mean, oh God, people right. are going to be gathering oh, the end of the f- a podcast. People are gathering, <laughs> gathering around the fire, listening to this podcast with all their extended family. I hope they're not. What's a pun? A pun is fun, but why is a pun so goddamn fun? If you've got comedic count this show, a pun is a single word with two or more definitions. Synonym you must have heard is one definition for two or more words. So why does a pun hit the funny spot, but a synonym does not? Or can synonyms be funny? Oh. Let's find out with a game of synonym bum, synonym bum, synonym bum. That's synonym bum. Synonym bum, synonym bum, synonym bum. That's synonym bum. Right, in this order, in I'll just shout order. out your names. You've got to think of a synonym for bum. <laughs> in this order, and you've got to do it as quick as you can. You've only got two seconds, ready? I'm going to shout your name and you have to say a synonym for bum. Ready? Five, four, three, two, one, Ed. Ass. That's synonym bum. Mark. That's synonym bum. He's out, Hello. he's out. Hello. Sleep. Okay. Joe. But that's synonym bum. Alex. Bottom. That's synonym bum. Ben. <laughs> Peach. That's synonym bum. Ed. Oh, that's nice. What? That's synonym bum. I'm You're still out. going, do you? Oh, I'm just still going. I didn't know that. Not very clear. <laughs> Behind. That's synonym Alex. bum. Derriere. That's synonym bum. Ben. Oh. Bum cakes. Sick. That's synonym Joe. bum. Rear. That's synonym bum. Alex. Sweet cheeks. That's synonym bum. Ben. <laughs> Shithole. That's synonym <laughs> bum. Go. Uh, bop bop. That's synonym bum. Alex. The face without any eyes or nose. <laughs> That's synonym <laughs> bum. Ben. Uh, backside, have we had that? No, no, That's no, 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 synonym no, no, no. bum. Go. Uh. Cauliflower? That's synonym bum. <laughs> no, you're out. You're out. That's the Alex. <laughs> uh, poop shoot? That's synonym bum. Ben. Heine? Is that your bum? That's yeah. synonym bum. Yeah. 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 I've, got, I've got one. Alex. Oh, Mark's Mark. back in. Tell me yours. Uh, I've got one. Tell me yours, Mark. Fa- Fanny. Fanny. 
Oh. That's synonym bum. Hey. Across the pond. For hey. the US. Yeah, but for the US guys. Uh, anus. That's synonym bum. Alex. I'm out. That's synonym okay. bum. Okay, Ben's the winner. Oh. With okay. anus. Round one That's synonym bum. Okay, well look, it's time to it's time to meet our other one person special guest audience now. So let's all He's the voice of Christmas. Yeah. He's the cheer, cheery little poet. It's silly old Tim Key. Yay! It's Tim, Tim, Tim Key. Key. Welcome to the last horn section podcast of twenty twenty one. To who? To me. Well, this is quite late in the podcast. I just can't welcome the listener now. So that's me? Yes. Is there anything you want to well, say? Oh, what? Pardon? Well, you, you, usually you say hello rather than welcome to the final horn section podcast of 2021. But usually we're not doing a podcast. We're, so, we're just having a, a chat. Do you want me to send... Do you want me to read out mm. the text between me and Will from the band? <laughs> yes, please. Uh, is it to do with Santa being stuck somewhere? No. Well, we'll do something about that later on. Okay, well, this is his one. Uh, you'll like this. <laughs> he asked me to... Oh, yeah, it is to do with that. Okay, that's fine. So he asked me to do... To record myself shouting mm. as if I was Santa stuck in the chimney. Yeah, do you want to do that? Because I can set it up for you. Oh, no, I'm already talking to him about that. Well, this will be the time to do it. Oh, I thought you meant you could... Um, Oil the wheels and get me the get me the roll. <laughs> I think the roll's yours if you want it. I think I'd be quite a good Santa. Is there is there more stuff to the texting? The, yeah. Okay. So he asked me to do that. So he phoned me mm. and said, "Can you do that?" Yeah, that's coming later. And I podcast, said, so "Stay tuned." I said, "Oh yeah, okay." Then I said, "I'll be self conscious doing that in the flat because huh. he wanted me to, he wanted me to shout." Yeah. As, as Santa, saying, I'm stuck, I'm stuck, yeah, I've got a fat belly. Yeah, yeah. So I was going to go to the theatre to do a technical rehearsal. So I said, why don't you call me at 4.15 and I'll do it from in the theatre because I can just shout from on stage. Mm -hmm. Then he sent me a text at 10 to 3. He said, might not happen today after all. My boy's school suddenly closed for the rest of term because of COVID. Oh. Also, my fucking bastard computer is playing up. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be in touch. Hmm. Be in touch. I'll be in touch with you too, Viz Films. Something else we're doing. Get well soon to the lad. Hmm. Uh, He's put. Right. He's put. Thanks. He's not ill, but thanks. <laughs> yeah, why did you assume his son was ill? Can everyone stop nicking my band, please? And using them in things. Uh, who's that to? That's you and Adam Buxton. Oh, huh, OK. Well, they're quite useful to nick. Actually, I would say, if there's anyone listening... Um, get in touch with the band directly quite or cheap. the horn section. Pardon me? They're quite cheap. They're, yeah, they're cheap, but they're brilliant. Yeah, cheap. All but of brilliant. them are brilliant. They all, they all do different. They all do different stuff. If you're a listener to the podcast, you'll see. They give. Um, they're all funny, um, and they all are brilliant musicians. All over six foot. So, do you want to read out a Christmassy poem that you've done out loud? Yeah, can do. They can play Christmassy music underneath it because they're brilliant and cheap. Um, what about? Um, uh, do you want it to be like? Do you want it to have a swear word in it or not Not so much? Ah, uh, they like the naughty one about the elf. What's that? Oh, do they? You remember? Yeah. Oh, well, I'm going to read... Oh, that's this one. An elf was making a toy. He slipped and cut himself next to his dick. Yeah. But that's all that one is. Yeah. yeah. Well, you can do well, a longer one if you want. They're... Well, uh, there's one that I wanted to do that is a new one. Huh? Okay. Do you want them to play any sort of music underneath it? Uh, yes. What? Uh, like modern music. In the bleak midwinter? Yeah, I wouldn't want to go much more modern. We'll have a remix of In the Bleak Midwinter under this. Okay. I've got... Well, well, we'll leave you now. We'll go back to the band and we'll come back for the poem. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Can you say hi to Joe? Yeah. Okay. Oh, so Tim says uh, to all of you that he owes you a curry because of the eye incident. Oh, That's yeah. Crazy. Yeah, it's been a while. Eyelash. Yes, we'll take him up on that. Well, look, it's time to have a chat about hats. It's hat chat time. So the pianist is going to play a little riff. Mark. Hi, man. Hey, man. How often do you wear a hat? Never. Joe, what was the last hat you bought? Uh, green woolly hat. Ben, have you ever worn one of those hats that has beer cans on and long straws? Nope. Pianist, is there such a thing as a piano hat? Yes. Willip, <laughs> which six tennis players have hats for surnames? 
Um... <laughs> oh, I've got one. Oh, yeah. Ricky, Ricky hat on. <laughs> OK. <laughs> I'll give you half a point for that. Reynolds has got one. Roger Fedora. Roger Fedora is quite right. We've also Very got... Good. Pete Sombrero. Oh, uh, that's is... just what I was saying there. <laughs> Andre Agatsby, Venus Wizard Hat, Boris uh, Beret, and Martina Navrata Baralaclava. There we go. Venus <laughs> Wizard Hat? Yeah, Venus w Wizard Hat instead of Venus Williams. <laughs> Stop the piano riff. Recently, I bought a hard hat and I was very nervous, but I managed to put it on just like that. It was actually quite easy. Okay. <laughs> it's time for more chat with Rupert Gregson Williams. Thank goodness. Oh, mm. What a great podcast this is. Yeah. So <laughs> Fast moving. How did you jump from composing music for adverts to being an assistant to Hans Zimmer? How did that work? Um, well, it's a, it's a small world. So if you put yourself out there, um, people are always looking for an apprentice. There's a sort of... Um, there's a, a great symbiotic thing that happens. You, if you get, I mean, I've I've had a few assistants. I've had five or six or seven, and I'd say three or four of them have got great careers now, and they've gone on done their own things. And that's the way this business works best. So, Hans Hans um, was friends with um, a composer who I worked with in in London called Richard Harvey, who's uh, who's a fantastic composer, and he introduced Harry to Hans. Harry did a couple of years assisting him, and then then Harry moved on, did his own thing, and 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 I I jumped in and, and did the same thing. So, um, yeah, Hans has put up with mm. the GWs for for a long time. Yeah, so Harry's your brother, and Hans Zimmer obviously has been described a lot as a genius. Does it is it is it normal now? I mean, you know him pretty well. Does he does he like sandwiches? <laughs> he likes burgers, sandwiches, a glass of wine, and he's and he's he's very normal in that way. But he is he is a genius, um, and I, I he's the only one I've ever met, I think, um, because his brain just works in a different way to to mine. You know, I I he's always looking for something. I guess he's like a chemist, you know, who's always or or maybe someone looking for a vaccine. There's, he's just always looking for something that hasn't happened before. Or is is mm. something that can do something? He's 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 very motivated towards uh, originality and uh, and something that's going to get the emotions going, uh, as as all of us composers or writers are. But there's just something special about him. He's, I, I I can't put my finger on it. He's also one of the funniest guys around, and warm, and uh, and uh, gregarious, and um, very loyal. So he's. He's lucky he's got a bit of a package going. Uh, he's not just yeah. a, a genius all screwed up and and uh, and and impossible. He's just actually a, a, a brilliant person too. So lucky to have known him and uh, and he's and he's helped my career along the way massively just by his influence on me. You know, and he's got a cool name. I mean, I, yeah, you're <laughs> right. He's got everything. It's it's interesting you say. He, He's the only genius you think you've met because maybe yeah maybe you only know once you've met one. Annoyingly, the in comedy, I think based on those uh, criteria, um, you know, always looking for originality and a different way into things. Tim Key is the comedian who I think is probably the genius, but he's also my friend, and that's the most annoying <laughs> things. It was a nice yeah. chat with Rupert, but there are two other guys I'd like to hear from now, and they're called Jorge and Hazus, and oh! they are horses. Oh! Christmas guys. Hello, Jorge. Hello, Jesus. Get Go. comfortable, guys. Hello. Right. <laughs> Jorge well, and Jesus have been working hard. <laughs> Before you start singing, maybe some of the bandmates want to chat to you guys. Ben, is there anything you want to say to the horses? Uh, I'd quite like to know: Do they actually? Are they? Do they live together? What's the relationship? Great question. Don't know. You must. Know. <laughs> There's no information about Jorge. And you are the. You, you are, are the. Are. <laughs> I'm afraid we've just got a recording of them today. <laughs> <laughs> There's a question from the pianist. Uh, hi, Jorge and Jesus. Uh, <laughs> I think I met your uncle the other day, but um, he was quite reluctant to talk. He seemed shyer than you. <laughs> oh. He sounds like he's got a similar sense of humour to us. <laughs> <laughs> right, is it time for the for the song? I've got a question for for... Either Jorge or Jesus. Oh, you are uh, Jorge you are or Jesus. Jesus. Well, that's the, exactly. <laughs> Which one am I? <laughs> Jorge or Jesus? Well, you can answer yourself. 
Well, Go ho, hey. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> No, and what have, you got for us, what have you got for us today, Jesus and Jorge? Ah, oh, festive treat. Hmm. So are you reindeers today? That's how it works, isn't it? They may get a mention, if you're, oh, good. If you're lucky. Oh, I couldn't be excited about this. <laughs> <laughs> While Jorge and Jesus, the horses from Lagos, saddle up and fly, world passes by. This time those two bellends are looking forward to Christmas, wearing horseshoes, they're pissed up on booze. Hey Jorge. Yes, Hazers. Would you like to come round for Christmas lunch? Yes, please, Hazers. What will you be serving for pudding? I'll have to let you know, I haven't figured it out yet. Is that... Oh, the bar is set. <sighs> well, <laughs> number one. <laughs> That's one of about ten. Hey, Jorge. Yes, Hazers. Do you believe in reindeer? Of course I do, Hazers. Look outside, it's raining now, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> hey, Hazers. Yes, Jorge. Were you born in a stable? Yes, I was born in a stable. That's why they called me Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. I always thought it was because your mother was a Mary. <laughs> Mary. <laughs> oh, wow. It's got levels. Hey, Jorge. Yes, Hazers. Were you born in a stable? Yes, that's why I left the bloody door open. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Tick. Checks out. Hey, Jorge. Yes, Hazers. This is my favourite season to go to the theatre, and also I think I'm wearing your underwear. That's no pantomime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, best, best ever. That's the one. Hey, Jorge. Yes, Hazers. I think we can agree about the best bit of Christmas, sitting in front of the TV at noon or 3pm or whatever it is, to look at the Queen's peach. She really does have a cracking queen's peach. <laughs> Glad we got that joke back from the... Hey, Jorge, hey, I've sure. got a joke. What did the staff at the Household Waste and Recycling Centre say to Mary and Joseph? I don't know. What did the staff at the Household Waste and Recycling Centre say to Mary and Joseph? There's no room in the bin. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Hazers, sometimes I get tired of cracker jokes. Pull your elf together. <laughs> Hazus, I think you're being a bit of a prick. That's a bit harsh, Jorge. Maybe you'll tired. <laughs> you'll tired? You'll tired? You'll tired? You'll tired? You'll tired? You'll tired? <laughs> hey, Hazus. <laughs> what, Jorge? <laughs> you're robbing me up the wrong way. Snow joke. While Jorge and Hazers, the horses from Lagos, saddle up and fly, the world passes by. Woo! What a rush! Oh, it's Christmas. Excellent, excellent work. Let's find out what Tim Key thought of that. Did you like the Jorge and Jesus section that we just played? And have you got a Christmassy poem you could say out loud to us? Well, I always like the Jorge and Jose section. I've enjoyed your podcast this time around, by the way. <clears throat> You've had some good guests. It's been good fun. And then welcome distraction. So here's the poem. My, are they going to play underneath it, yeah? They are right now. What, what do you think okay, that noise is? Sorry. You're a lovely band. Mm. My Christmas tree stepped out of its bucket and joined me in the kitchen. Are you going to do any of those M&S savoury bite things? I was astonished my tree was talking. And who do I have to fuck around here to get a beer? His voice had a rather unsympathetic quality. What do you think about that? Well, he stepped out of his bucket. Yeah, the tree comes alive in that one. My one's clamped in. Well, then it's not going to step out. He'd have to reach down with one of his branches and unclamp himself. Lefty Lucy. How's... What do you mean, Lefty Lucy? That's, how, that's what we'd be thinking. He sounds like he uses <laughs> slang a lot. <laughs> oh, what, my one? Yeah. Yeah, my my one. He, he's only ever said two things, mm. like in since I made him up. Um, one of them is you're going to do any of those M and S savoury bite things, and the other one is and who do I have to fuck around here to get a beer? So, can your Christmas tree see the telly? 
Like, is that where he's learning this from? Oh, like short circuit. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to play. Which face am I describing? Okay. Uh, what music do you want to be played under? Which face am I describing? You can just pick an instrument if you want. Uh, yeah, I'm going to pick an instrument and an influence. Oh, okay. Uh, um, so I'd like to pick um, the trumpet. Yep. And ABBA. Trumpet ABBA. Under the influence of ABBA, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Which face am I describing? He's got quite uh -huh. rosy cheeks, and the rest of his face is quite rosy. And I like his face. Can I buzz in? Yes. And I like his face. And his nose is quite thick, to be fair. And it bends to the left a decent bit at the top. Oh, I, I... Ah, there's a buzzer there. Tim Key. Well, I'm not sure now, because his nose bent at the end of that. A decent but bit I'm going to say... Top. Father Christmas. No, no. You've been okay. lured into Keep... that. And keep going, keep going. His mouth is normally open a little bit, and he's got short grey hair that's quite messy oh, and quite neat. Okay. Yep. Phil Mickelson. No, you've got three more guesses. Not far okay. off. Sort of between the two. Um, okay. His hair is sort of messy, sort of neat. His eyes are a bit hidden in all the rosy cheeks. He's got lines going down from his nose on both sides. He's got lines going down from his mouth on both sides. He's got lots of thick creases on his forehead. He always looks like he might have black eyes. More of a rugby player's face, really. It does smile quite a lot. It also grimaces quite a bit. It's a great face. I just was using my buzzer loads. Oh, right. Tim Key. Ricky Hatton. <sighs> Getting there. It is in the sporting world. You've got two more guesses. His face... It is in the sporting world. His face is very nearly 60 years old. And yep. and behind the face, he has a, a, a gravelly Northumberland voice. Oh, yes. Got it. Yep. Tim Key. Steve Bruce. It is Steve Bruce, yeah. I think he'd make a good Santa. Do you know the song, When Santa Got Stuck Up the Chimney? Uh, no. Well, I'll play it for you now. When Santa got stuck up the chimney, he began to shout. Mm -hmm. So Willip's idea is that you're playing Santa and, um, mm -hmm. and you'll shout some things. He said, um, he said, what should I shout? Well, he shout me things like, Oi, oi, you could try that. Ooh, yeah, ooh, yeah. ooh, who are you? Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm lonely, I'm freaking so out. So he's put these in a text? Yeah, I mean, I could send them over chat to you if you want. Yep, OK. Um, yeah, so it's written by Willip, but I guess, you know, feel free to add your own lines if you, if you feel comfortable doing that. Oh, yeah, OK. When... Oh, am I shouting? I'm just going to shout all of this, yeah? Yeah, do you want me to, oh, right, do you want okay. to sing it each time? I... Yeah, OK. We'll insert... And how many am I doing each, how many am I doing each time? I'll, I'll just leave it till you're finished. Okay, well, I'll do, I'll do all of them each time. Where, oh, really? Yeah. I'll get, I'll, get, I'll get through them, though. Are you going to insert any of your own? Or do, or, or, no, I don't think so. I think no. I quite like the writing here. Okay. When Santa got stuck up the chimney, he began to shout. Oi, oi! That's quite good. Ooh, 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 who are ya? Hey, lads! Lads! That's it for now, I think. Oh, Tim, yeah. what's been your highlight of 2020? What a, what a year it's been. The pandemic. What? The pandemic. Yeah. The pandemic. Uh, what are you looking forward to in 2021? Um, oh, what am I looking forward to? One word. Hmm. I don't know if I can do it in one word. Uh, the Olympics. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> the Olympics. Tokyo. Are you going to go? <sighs> yeah, I'm in the 110 hurdles. You? Ah. Uh, yeah, I'm doing the 110 meter hurdles. Oh, I'm doing the 110 hurdles, the... not the 110 meter hurdles. So like, oh, right. mine's like how, 10 how long are they? How long are they? How long are they spread out for? <laughs> There's one meter between each. So yeah, it's 110 meters. <laughs> <laughs> up down, up down, up down, up down. <laughs> when Santa got stuck up the chimney, he began to shout. I'm lonely. I'm freaking out. <laughs> Yuck. Brandy, apple pies and carrots. Okay, bye. Yeah. We finished. What? We finished. I thought I was going to plug my book. <laughs> you did. Oh, uh, no, no, no. Can I say where you can get it? Yep. Oh, we've just cu I just cut you off. Oh, okay. All right, see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want people to know where you can buy it? I mean, they'll figure it out, won't they? Yeah. Oh, go on then. No, they won't. These, pe these people are thick as shit. Hey, I was... hey. Our ones are lovely. Yeah, well, he used thought as a wife. He he used thought. He thought he had a wife. Was it? He used thought as a wife. Is there a subtitle? Yeah. Oh, good. It has to be. Yeah. Uh, 
An anthology of poems and conversations from inside. Christ. Christ alive. Happy Christmas. Uh, it's a brilliant book. Is it cheap? Uh, not as cheap as most books. <laughs> it's £15. Pounds. Can you record over it like a blank tape? Could you record another book on it? Right, so can people buy it and then write a book inside mm. it? Yeah, you'd probably have to paint on some Tipex onto all the pages and then you'd be scribbling away with Biro on top but of it. But it's an option. It's probably your best option. <laughs> you can get it from Utter and Press. Utter and Press. Well, look, can you not say Waterstones uh, or something? This isn't available in the shops. Well, what are you doing? I don't know how to do it. It's an expensive book with a title no one understands that you can't buy in a bookshop. I, I, do you think I'm mounting a defence against that? <laughs> also, it's, it's full of typos. It's incredibly rushed. It doesn't make sense. I didn't finish it properly, but we had to print it. <laughs> well, I don't know what's so funny, but also, no, we, we can't get told off because we've done it ourselves. Don't drag me into it. How am I dragging you into you it? You kept saying we. No, me and Emily Juniper, the girl that I made it with. Well, you can't assume that everyone knows that that's what you're talking about. She's brilliant. Look at this. Some of these pages. Is she cheap? She's fantastic. How do you mean, is she cheap? Does she get a cut of it? Is she on a percentage? Yeah. Poor old Emily Juniper. Why poor old Emily Juniper when she's on a percentage? It's not Star Wars. Yet. When does this show go out? Tuesday. Or, f- yeah. or Wednesday. Well, hang on. Wednesday. <laughs> Wednesday of next week? Before Christmas. Uh, yeah, Wednesday of next week. You're on with Rupert Gregson-Williams, the film composer. Yeah, I think I know who Rupert Gripson Windham's is. <laughs> All right, I have to go now. (laughs) Oh, hello, everyone. Are you all sad or happy? Neither. Pretty happy. Happy. Happy, I think, yeah. A little bit from column A and a little bit from column (laughs) B. Well, in that case, let's have another song. Now then, we haven't written another song yet, but someone will do in the next five days. Who's it going to (laughs) be? If you wear a hat indoors, then I'll need to know the cause of your need to wear a hat indoors. Then a friend of mine called Rufus and his team of 30 roofers may come and remove your roof or hat. Did you enjoy the song, lads? Oh, amazing. Oh, well, did we ever? Yes. Well, from... Uh, two highly successful musicians to one. Rupert, back to you. <laughs> Can I get, as a musician, your immediate reaction to five bits of music to see Go. how we differ? Because I'm very much the layman. These are things I like. Uh, Bad Out of Hell by Meatloaf. Love it, but it's more of a memory than uh, than actually listening to it now. It would give me a, give me a fantastic memory. I'm not sure musically whether mm-hmm. it would do my nut, but I love it, yeah. Okay, uh, then I've got You Took the Words Right Out of My Mouth by Meatloaf. <laughs> okay, I love it. For the same reason yep, as good. one. Yeah. Uh, anything by Enya. I don't know. No, I'm not sure. Mm. It's... I feel like I'm the only one who likes Enya, but I'm sticking by her. I, I work with her sister, Moira, uh, on a couple of films, and she has a voice very like Enya. They, one fact about the way they sing is that they have to do take about 10 breaths well about moira anyway she takes 10 breaths for every phrase that she sings because that breathiness takes up so much air so you have to drop in 100 oh. times on every phrase used to spit of information it's a great your fact yeah yeah <laughs> and then finally the music to star wars is it the best movie music in your opinion no but it's the most memorable and uh, iconic fair enough fair enough yeah, i've got i wrote a little list of my you know i guess it's most people's top movie scores but maybe it's because they're the most popular movies but things like et pink panther godfather good the bad the ugly indiana jones what what would you say what's what's right up there for you godfather i love uh and there's Mm -hmm. there's yeah i mean john williams has written maybe three of the my favorite 10 i should think and et is one of them yeah Mm -hmm. for sure jurassic park it's not a bad score yeah we get asked to play that so much if we're on stage and we ask for a song even though we haven't said a movie soundtrack they always ask for jurassic park yeah 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 well, it's, there's something about it it's a good tune i mean the film that got me into music was the blues brothers weirdly you, you know which yeah. isn't really a score but it's, it's a it's i guess it's a musical yeah i'll do a bit of your resume for the listener and it 
when I sort of, I've been aware of you because I kept seeing your name at the end of things. But it turns out I've been listening to your music for a long time without knowing it, which I guess is what a lot of our listeners have done. So things like Hotel Rwanda, like this shows the difference. Then Wallace and Gromit, The Curse of the Were Rabbit, and <laughs> Over the Hedge and Tarzan and B Movie. I'd seen all them. Postman Pat the movie. Then things like Veep, Catch Twenty Two, Wonder Woman. Are when you hear those uh, things, are you proud of that list? Does that you know is that just your normal working life? Uh, no, the, well, there's one or two in there I'm proud of. Uh, you didn't mention Thunderpass. Okay. That's the one I'm most proud of. But um, I did not. Uh, and if your kids haven't seen it, get get them to watch that. That's fun. Is that is is it? Uh, it's not the pirate. No, I don't think they have seen Thunderpants. Thunderpants is uh, about a boy who farts, um, and he can power a rocket. He powers a rocket with his farts. Well, I mean, this is right in their wheelhouse. Yeah, exactly. It's good. It's a good one. I don't know where you can get it from. Can you now make the music you want to make? Can you pick the movies rather than waiting? For them to get in touch with you at all? Um, I think I've made enough relationships with directors and producers that um, notwithstanding the last year year where no one's mm-hmm. being able to write anything, but I've, I've got enough relationships where I feel that, that, that people have phoned me and say, I've got this great um, project on the go. I want to send you the script and we'll talk about it in six months' time. And I've, So I, it's not that I can ch- pick or choose. I'm not that lucky. Um, but I've certainly got enough relationships sure. that could keep me busy, and and that's that's great. In your opinion, what, what's your most recognisable piece of music? I've I've written down two movie, well, one movie and one TV series that that caught my eye when I saw your name at the end of them. What 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 would you say your two uh, calling cards are? Uh, the Crown. Um, yep. Tick. Um, and uh, I don't know. Um, not Aquaman or Wonder Woman. Or Tarzan. Uh, I don't know. You tell me. Not for me. I put Hacksaw Ridge. That was oh, exciting. Yeah. yeah, that was great. Yeah, I love that. I love loved doing that. And the ex- whole experience was amazing. And it didn't have a lot of time to do the score. I think Mel had sort of had moved on from a... He'd had a composer on before and he moved on from, from that. And he had to get it into the Venice Film Festival. So, so did he send you? Sorry to talk nuts and bolts, but did he he send you the movie? Did he t- describe the idea? What was what was the first thing he said? The way it went was I I just I just started the first holiday I'd had in about four years, and I literally Perfect. just just landed in France with with my wife, and we were just driving somewhere, and I got a phone call from Mel saying, "Can you be in Sydney tomorrow?" And of course, I you don't get that call very often, so I so I did. Zim sitting the next day. He he played me the film. He sorted a piano in the in the theatre that we sat in, and he just sat next to me for for a couple of hours while I fiddled on the piano. Completely useless drivel coming out. And I said, "Let just let me go home. Give me a day or two. <laughs> and so, uh, and luckily, asleep on the plane on the way back, I I had a couple of ideas. And then by the time you know, within forty eight hours, I had a had an MP three sent it to him, and then we got a discussion going. So. It was all very quick. I had to do it all in about two or three weeks, which so and then and then I mean, that's, within a month or two after that, we were in Venice showing it, and it, it was quite I special. Mean, it's an amazing story, but my the thing I'm mainly interested in is how that conversation with your wife went, because um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> any holiday's a holiday, and even if it's Mel Gibson, yeah, that's ruined the holiday. She was all right. She she stayed in France. She didn't. She wasn't. Yeah, she didn't. She didn't cash that one in. We offer all our guests the chance, and this is pretty exciting, Rupert, um, to choose some music that we'll play at your funeral, um, free of charge. <laughs> we will we will come along, sit at the back, and just start playing it. So, what 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 music or song would you like us to play? we you know we're we're all right. I think uh, a track called "Treacherous Cretins" by Frank mm-hmm. Zappa. Done. We will play that nice and loud throughout the service. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. I'll I'll hold (laughs) you to that, or someone will.
OK, it's time for this. It's a big moment. It's time for Tim Key versus the band. Tim Key versus Tim Key versus Tim Key versus Tim. Yes, it is Tim Key versus Tim Key versus Tim. Jingle wow. ever. That's a good thing. It's a game where closest answer wins. Uh, ten questions here. It's you guys versus the band. The winner gets a green T-shirt. I'm not in the band. I've left the band. <laughs> oh, good. I'm saddling, <laughs> saddling up with da -da 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 -da, Neil <laughs> Diamond. Is he still alive? Oh, that's a good... Yes, he's still alive. Yes. Ba -ba -ba. Diamond and I are touring next year. Meanwhile, OK, so <clears throat> they're all numerical questions. Closest answer wins. Question one of ten. How many Pringles are there in a big tube of Pringles? Band, you must guess in about ten seconds. No Googling, please. Are we allowed you to confer? You can confer, yes. Mark, are you Googling? This... Mark's Googling. Oh, I see. He's definitely Googling. I reckon it's about, what, 90-odd? I was going to say oh, I was going to say 40. No, it's well, 40. 40. I need an answer. 150. Somewhere, Somewhere in the middle, 76 70. or something? 75. So, What's your final answer? Let's so go for 80. 150. 80. They're, they're, 80. Going, they're going for 80. Tim? 90. 90? Well, the correct answer is 90. Oh! oh Joe Auckland said Ugh. it. 1 0 yeah. to Tim Key. Question two How many songs have Status Quo recorded? Whatever you want. Oh, <laughs> I will give you a bonus point for that. <laughs> yes, well done, Will. <laughs> One, um, is it? <laughs> 100. <laughs> I think it's one. <laughs> uh, what? I need an answer. What we're we going for? Are you going for 100? No, no, less than that. Fewer. They've been going for 50 years. Yeah, yeah they've they done 10 out. They've done 10 out. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, it, and they're all the same, so it wouldn't take much writing. I mean, it could be 120. Yeah. 110? 10. Yeah. Oh, it's annoying there's, annoying there's so many of you. 110 you've gone for. It's 228. Ooh. Tim, what have you gone for? 320. 320, which means, yes, you're the closest. It's 2-1 to Tim, thanks to Willips. Bonus point. Question three. How many Zone 1, London Underground, Overground Ooh. and DLR stations are there? Oh, so 100. Underground, Overground and DLR stations in Zone, zone one. 1. Zone 1? Yes. 100. Yes. Yes. 100? Sounds a lot. Sounds a lot to me. It's exactly, it's exactly 100. Is it? It's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Well, from now on, I'm going to say that Mark is going to provide your answers <laughs> because it's quicker that way. Mark, what are you saying? 100. OK, Tim, what do you think? 135. <gasps> well, it's actually 65. Mark and the band, you're the closest. 2-2. Hey, two, well, two. What did okay. Tim say? He said 135. That's too many. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 Question four. In the Gettysburg Address, how many times did Abraham Lincoln say the word uh? Uh. Ah. Ah. Well, ah. E -R. ah. 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 It's spelled ah. uh. It's spelled a. A million? Uh, that's two yeah, million. A million? Um, what, what are you going for, Mark? 500. OK. A band, are you happy with 500? Yeah, yeah fine. It's far too many. Tim, what do you think? I don't know much about that guy. Is he the sort of person who would mm. pad it out with those? Uh, well, he's not going to say, I got on a uh, horse. Oh, uh, did he say, I got on a horse? <laughs> Is that how he opened I it? I don't want to give you any clues. <laughs> 2,000? Uh, no, it's not 2,000. I want to change that okay. one. OK. 5 million. 5 million? Well, it's actually seven. It's a, <laughs> it's a 275 word long address. Is it? So it's, it's, it's level, is it? No, it's 3-2 to us. It's 3-2 to the band. Question five, yes. how many bones are there in a cat? Quick fire now, how many bones are there in a cat? Uh, 60. 178. Well, I've got to take your first answer, 60. Tim, what do you think? 
Including all the bones? Yes, we're including all the bones. <laughs> OK. <laughs> um, well, it's the same as a human, isn't it? More than a human, actually. There's a clue. And what's a human? I'm not telling you. OK. You've got to remember that when, he, when it boils down to it, things like the ear have got, got about 50 bones. Mm. A bit quicker. So, OK. Uh, I have to t- well, time you out. Though, those ones, plus the legs, 58. <laughs> <laughs> How many shoes? Does... Oh no! Oh. There's two bones in each leg. Ah. <laughs> oh, yes, I've got sixty-two. Uh, that's fine. Oh, fifty-eight. Uh, no, no, fi- fifty-eight. Okay. There's nothing in the tail, is there? <laughs> fifty-eight. Well, band, you're lucky. It's two hundred and thirty. You just win that one in a four-two lead now. How many pairs of shops does the average American woman own, according to a recent study by Shop Smart magazine? Do you mean shoes? Pairs of shops. Shoes, pairs of yeah. shoes. How many pairs of shoes? You said shops. You said shops. Oh, yes, how many pairs? You said of... shops. We've got to take your first answer, so I think we'll go yeah. at zero. So zero. zero. Well, you won't get Nobody well don't say that, otherwise you'll get it wrong. <laughs> well, How many was... pairs of shoes did the average American woman own, according to a recent study Does by Shop Smart magazine? Wellies? Doesn't say. Fourteen. Fourteen wellies. Is that no. just wellies? Lower. Ten. Lower. Ten. Thirty. Ten. Thirty. Eight. I'm hearing thirty. I'm Eight. taking Hang thirty. On. Not Eight. thirty. Well, what do you think, Ben? It's got to be like more like seventeen. The average. Come on, it's going to be loads lower than that. I think thirty. Can't be thirty. No well, one I'm going to take, take Willip's answer. Willip, what's your I've answer? I've got thirty pairs of shoes. Ten. Well, Tim, how many shoes or how many pairs of shoes? Uh, shoes. Oh, it must be pairs of shoes. Good question, because it's an odd number. The answer. <laughs> <laughs> how many pairs of shoes? Well, you got to think she's got she's got more than I have. I mean, I'd say I'd say twenty-two. No, I'd say twenty pairs of shoes. You're not going for the odd number. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'll say, I'll say 17. 17? It's 19. Oh, no, it's so, not. 4 3 now. It's exciting. Uh, question 7. How many feral camels are there in Australia? <laughs> none. 2 million. None. 2 million. Well, we've gone for none or 2 million. What are we going for? Uh, Joe, the. Tr- the little trumpeter who's been silent for a little while. Are you saying that because I look really confused by this question? Yes. No, it's because you look like a camel. <laughs> I, how many... <laughs> feral or camels Australia. are there in Australia? How many breeding pairs? How many feral camels are there in Australia? 25. <laughs> right. <laughs> Tim, what do you think? This is going to be a guess. Ah. First guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, feral... Um, okay. Well, it's double figures. Uh, in Australia, mm. maybe it's surprising. I'm going to go for 25,000. 25,000? Well, it's 1.2 million. It's level level. <laughs> Four all. Three questions to go. It's so exciting. How many times does the moon orbit the Earth in a year? Quick, quick answer. 12. Tim, what do you reckon? Is it a trick question? I mean, I have no idea about these ones. You could say a million uh, or one. I wouldn't have a clue. Did you make these up? Well, d- uh, yes. Then I looked them up. Huh. Uh, okay. Um, how many times does the moon orbit the Earth in a year? Yes, please. Well, um, the, the honest truth is, I don't know, so I'm going to go for <laughs> 360. Oh, well, I'll tell you what, I'll say this to you listeners. I, I know how many days there are in the year. Let's put it that way. <laughs> 365, that's what we're going for. <laughs> Yeah. It's it's 13. You're quite right, Willip. It's around Whoa. 13 every 28 days. And no one understands the moon. Uh, no. So 5-4 f- to the band. Tim, you need this one. In centimetres, how wide is a queen a queen mattress, queen-size mattress? 250. I'm going to take your first oh, nice. answer. Uh, nice. I've taken it. I've taken oh, it. Nice. What do you say, Tim? Queen-size. That's interesting. Mm. 180. 180. Yes, you've got it. It's actually 152. It's five all, oh. and it's the final question. Oh, oh, it all comes down to this question: How many top 40 songs have Little Mix had? How many top 40 songs have Little Mix had? Ooh. You're a band. Top He's a poet. 40. It's a lot. It's a lot. 15. I'd well, say. I, I, you, you can all come to a, a unified answer for this one. Go for it, Mark. I'd probably I'd, be all their I'd singles. Like be all their 15, singles, wouldn't it? I'd say 15 and, singles for a band that's been out together. And more. 10 years. If it's top 40, surely some of the others have got it. It is top 40. It is top 40. Oh, what are they going to go for? 20 then? Yeah, yeah 20. Yeah. Okay, Timmy, what Round do you think? 20. Th- th- this isn't a guess. They hold the record. Mm-hmm. I heard this yesterday too uh, from that Scottish guy. Yeah, I heard this yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Do you know his name? Can I get a bonus point for that? 
Colin Patterson. Yeah, that's who told me it too. <laughs> but what did he say? I'm going to say 35. He's gone for 35. It's, it's so exciting. The actual answer is 27. The band are seven away. <laughs> Tim's eight away. The band <laughs> wins! <laughs> Screw you, Key! <laughs> Screw you, Key! Hit the jingle again! Tim, <laughs> Key versus Tim, Key versus Tim, Key versus Tim, yes, it is Tim, Key versus Tim, Key versus Tim, Key versus Tim, Key versus the band! Tim, Key versus Tim, Key versus Tim, Key versus Tim, yes, it is Tim, versus Tim. This is Tim Key versus The Band! Right, well, that's it. Band, you're going to get uh, a green T-shirt between you in the post. All right, look, we're done. <laughs> ben, play us out with some really groov- groovy dumb- drum beating. Drum beating. So, oh, that's loud. We want to thank... Everyone, for all their support, we're sorry for so many gigs being cancelled, but they will all be rearranged and they will be lovely and we will be raring to go in 2021. Thanks to Joel and Joe Walker for all they've done this year. Joel, have a nice baby. Joe, have a lovely new year and happy birthday tomorrow. Thanks to everyone for listening. There's still time to buy the Horn Section Family Christmas album. It's on Bandcamp. Go for it. The single's out there too. We love you. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Go, 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 go. Bye, everyone. Happy Christmas. <laughs> Bob. Ladies and gentlemen, it's that time. It's Dingle time. Tingle time! Yes, Dingle time. Tingle time! Dingle time. Dingle time. Tingle time! the best. Joe Dixon, Joe Dixon, she even knows the snoring from my chest. Joe Dixon, Joe Dixon, you're the opposite of worse. Joe Dixon, Joe Dixon, amazing girlfriend, amazing nurse. So happy Christmas to you, Joe Dixon, from your boyfriend, Steve the Winter Vixen. Happy Christmas to you, Joe Dixon, from Steve, the winter vixen. Sarah Adam. Sarah Adam. What a woman. What a woman. This is her day. Da 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 That's right. Sarah Adam. Sarah Adam. What a woman. What a woman. This is her day. Dingle. From David and Hunt. She likes booze and bingo. She's a former trampolinist. Booze is a cat, cat, not alcohol, and bingo is a sweet that is ice landing. She likes to rave, she, she loves, loves to rave. rave, but only to haddock and chips, haddock and chips, haddock and chips, haddock and chips. So happy Christmas, Sarah Adams, from your happy husband David. David. Happy Christmas, Sarah, Sarah Adams. Adams. Say hi to Amanda Holden. Sarah Adams. Sarah Adams. What a woman. This is her day. Da, 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 from David and her From David. So Sarah happy Adams. Christmas, Sarah Adams. What a woman. Oh, you're such a this woman. Is a this is your dingle. From David and her Thank you, David. Yeah. Sarah Adams. This is your dingle. It's so good. It's so good. It's so good. Your cousin is Amanda Holden. Could it be you? Could it be you? Have you ever had a ride on a bike? Have you ever been for a run? Do you live in Brooklyn and why? Do you brew your beer subterranean? It could be you. It could be you. Could 
it be you? If you had a dog, would you call it Margot? Would you sit and chat with Thomas the Tortoise? Garrett Leonard would. If you had a dog, would you call it Margot? Would you sit and chat with Thomas the Tortoise? Garrett Leonard does. Sophie Gonzales Brown, yep. shall we do a jingle for your dad? Yes, let's. You know the guy, yep. the man who simply loves the New York Mets. Or is it Jets? Is he a cop? I don't know. Does he like cherry pop? I don't know. He's simply a guy who does a podcast called the Hudson Valley Rag Shop. The Hudson Valley Rag Shop. Uh -huh. The Hudson Valley Rag Shop. One more time. The Hudson Valley Rag Shop yep. is a podcast by your dad. Yes. It's time for another five dollar holler. It's this beautiful music and my beautiful voice. Hello! Combined to name check and thank those people who've kindly donated $5 per month. Do check that. Do stop the payments if you can't afford it. Thank you. We appreciate everything that you guys do for us. You make this podcast happen. So, as we reach the end of another series, we want to say, you guys are great. What we do is stupid, but you make it seem worthwhile. This bit's very quiet. This bit is much louder, though, guys. Here we go. Get ready for those names. This now for yours. If you missed it out, I'm sorry. We'll try to get back to you next year. Watch out. Shh. Aiden Wall Paintball Magazine. Yes, a paintball magazine. Mona Dedrostad. Emily Casely. Yeah, I leave a letter.